Hi, uh, my name is Patrick, and today, on the 4th of October 2021, I will be getting my first Pfizer shot. It's been a difficult um, decision, probably one of the hardest health decisions I think I've had to make in my life. Um, but I finally got around to deciding that it's the best course of action. And given that part of the process of deciding has involved uh, watching videos of other people going through the same thing, I thought it would be helpful for other people to, um, to see what I go through. So I'm going to do a series of videos. Uh, I'm going to do um, this afternoon, I'm going to get the vaccine, uh, the day after, and maybe three and seven days. And then same thing for the second, second dose. Um, just some thoughts, some general thoughts. So first I want to say, I want to um, let everybody know that I completely recognize my ignorance. I'm not a medical expert. I, my, the research I've done and the information I've been exposed to is probably extremely sparse compared to what other people have done. Um, but like everybody, I have a life and I can't be spending 24-7 um, learning everything there is to learn about immunology, virology, um, medicine, the human body. I have to make an informed choice based on what I've learned. I want to recognize that this whole issue of whether or not to get the vaccine has become extremely politicized and um, to a certain extent has formed camps and, and, and there's like I see a lot of evidence of tribalism which I think is is a real shame because it detracts from what I think is ought to be a, a, a rational decision as to whether or not you know, this is you know the best thing for for people to do and I think everybody is in a different situation and Everybody has different factors that um, contribute to whether or not it is good for them. I don't judge anybody whether or not they decide to get the vaccine or not. Um, I, I, given what I've gone through, I completely understand any hesitancy. And I think there's still potentially valid reasons to not get the vaccine. I think based on my experience of people sending me information, or the, the, the actual specific information that's out there, that the vast majority of people, whether pro or anti, are presenting their information in good faith. Um, however, I think there are a few that are deliberately misinforming. And um, yeah, I find that a real shame. Out of, part of the reason I've chosen to get the vaccine is that, although I can never be sure, the only misinformation that I've been virtually certain about has come from one side, and that's the um, anti-vaccine side. And just to, to tell you some of that, um, what I believe is misinformation, I could be wrong, it could be accurate. Um, the first um, is uh, ignoring the context of um, adverse events database, databases. So I've seen quite a few times um, anti-vaccine people report that there are a huge number of deaths or medical events associated with people taking the vaccine. And they, use, they, they back this up by looking at the stats that come out of um, adverse events databases without providing any of the context of what those are, the fact that they are reporting all events, the fact that um, they're not comparing to what the usual background level of medical events and deaths are in a population. Um, I would encourage anybody that is presented with the, those um, stats to, to really look into them and, and be aware of any of the disclaimers. So just, you know, the basic argument is um, in any population, a certain number of people in a given week will suffer from strokes, heart attacks, other horrible things. And some of those people um, in that given week will have had the vaccine. and. For those people, it may seem like one follows the other, but cause and effect has not been established. Um, another important, um, what I believe is misinformation, again, based on my research, based on the things I've looked up, is anti-vaxxers. Sorry, actually, sorry, I, I shouldn't say that. I don't like the term anti-vaxxer. Um, I think it's uh, as it labels other people. I've just used it myself, which I'm, I regret. Um, I think... Uh, it's a form of othering, and a lot of the people that are anti the Pfizer shot or other COVID vaccines are anti those specific ones and not anti-vaccine um, in totality. Anyway, what I have seen from the anti-Pfizer 
or anti-COVID vaccine people is uh, touting um, certain medi uh, medicines as virtual cures to COVID. The most common is hydrochloroquine, hydroxychloroquine and um, ivermectin. With, and, and they do this um, despite the fact that when you actually look into it a little bit, you'll see that yes, some of those medicines have signals that they, they might be potentially beneficial, but are very far off the mark from um, being able to be certainly touted as, as miracle cures. Um, if you look at ivermectin, for example, there have been a lot of studies, but they've all been very small. And there have been studies that show the opposite, that it's not effective. And I think they ignore how very difficult and complex it is to um, determine whether or not a medicine is effective. Um, so that's one thing. The other one that I, I get a lot from the um, anti side is contextualizing the risk of COVID versus the risk of getting a vaccine. And there, they, I think, correctly point out that the risk of death is extremely low, especially for somebody that has no comorbidities or is relatively young. Um, however, what they constantly seem to ignore is the risk of um, one having just an awful time of the disease. Uh, potentially hospitalization, which I believe is up to 10% of people. Um, and probably worse and more importantly, um, suffering from long-term effects of the illness, which is, I think, an, another extremely um, relevant reason to, to try to protect yourself from this virus. As far as I'm aware, I know it ranges, but you know, from 10 to 15 to 20% suffer from pretty ho horrible long COVID effects. And they're not, as some of these people say, um, people that have been treated in hospital or you know have gotten the severe side of the illness. A lot of the people have had very mild forms of COVID and have gone on to have long-term symptoms with no um, nothing on the horizon for uh, relief. And that's something that uh, I very, very much want to avoid. Um, yeah. uh, another thing is I find that the anti people often use highly emotive language. Um, which is a clue to their arguments not being rational. Although I don't dismiss them out of hand because of that, but, but I do, they take that into account. There's a whole heap of other information that I've got, things, you know, the more extreme side of things, things that are virtually impossible to verify that I guess are possibly true. I don't want to dismiss anything, um, but when making a decision for myself, um, I think, I have to set them aside because I can't. I can't know. I, I have no way of telling the level of veracity. Um, just a few things I think that the anti people do have a valid point about, which even though I agree that they're valid, I, on the balance of things, I think still mean that um, it is better off for me anyway to get the vaccine. So. I think they're absolutely right to point out that there are no mid to long term studies on the effects of this vaccine, and that is concerning. And I know that, you know, the other argument is that um, people that, um, uh, that, that most of the long term effects of vaccines are, are come out as a signal in the uh, short term and then nothing has appeared. But nevertheless, it is true that this vaccine, um, because of how soon it's come out, um, has no mid to long term studies on its potential negative uh, effects. Another valid point is I think there are, a, you know, a fair number of very qualified experts, immunologists, virologists, who have expressed concerns about this vaccine. Um, so, you know, I often hear the, the classic anti-vaxxer trope that, you know, they've heard from their uncle on Facebook. Well, no, that's not really a fair um, uh, thing to say about them, for most of them. Um, I think it's also totally fair to point out that we still don't know whether or not this vaccine provides long-term immunity. We don't know how long the immunity will last. Um, and that can diminish, you know, the, its value in terms of risk benefit. You know, if, if it's only giving you short-term immunity, is it really worth taking the risk of something that still has a certain level of uncertainty? Fair enough. Um, 
And I think also something which uh, yeah, I've noticed is that uh, the pro side seem to emphasize this as being something that's very pro-social, pro-community, protecting your family. Whereas actually, as far as I know, and again, I, I don't know, I could be missing a lot of information, the studies only really show how effective the vaccine is at providing at um, uh, limiting severe illness and death. They don't show um, how effective the vaccine is at reducing transmission. They, um, the, the studies that have been done when they've noted breakthrough infections have been breakthrough infections where there have been symptoms. So we have no idea, as far as I know, to what extent asymptomatic vaccinated people are spreading and capable of spreading the virus. Um, another thing I like to point out is, and this is a very important aspect in, in, in terms of my decision, is um, that in terms of at least short-term effects, if the short-term effects of a vaccine were as um, dangerous as some people have been um, saying they are, and occurring as frequently as some people say they are, I think that even at, at one, even if one in a thousand or one in ten thousand people we're having some kind of severe, serious medical event due to the vaccine, our hospitals and medical system would be flooded to such an extent that it would be impossible for the media to hide. Um, it would just be just so obvious. You, you're talking about a vaccine that has been um, dosed to, in New, I'm talking about New Zealand, but also across the world. In New Zealand, I think at least 2 million shots or more. If you do a quick maths on that, you know, one in a thousand. I don't know. I'm, I'm um, struggling here. Let me think. So, uh, two million, one in ten would be two hundred thousand. One in a uh, hundred would be twenty thousand. One in a thousand would be um, two thousand. Two thousand extra people on top of all the other normal background events that are hitting the medical system. I, I don't think that that's just um, plausible. So taking all of this into account, I know this has been a long video, um, today I've decided I will get the Pfizer vaccine. I'm a healthy, relatively young 44 year old male. Um, I crossfit three times a week. I, yeah, I very rarely get sick. Um, I have a heart murmur, but it's been completely checked out. I don't smoke or drink. Hard, I definitely don't smoke. I drink very, very seldomly. Um, my heart murmur has been diagnosed and uh, found to be completely non-pathological. Um, so, you know, if anything does happen to me, and it's a way of taking control as well, um, it will be recorded and you will find out. So, again, I totally respect everybody's individual decision and I will always um, uh, believe and fight for people's rights to um, take or deny or refuse any kind of medical treatment. And this is um, one of them that fits into that category. So thank you very much for listening and stay tuned for the next video.